about the upper limb tension test for the ulnar nerve. Here are a couple indications and contraindications for the test. Some reasons why you would do the test include a patient who's presenting with pain or burning sensation down the arm consistent with neuropathic pain. You can use this test to rule in or out ulnar nerve involvement, and several types of injuries can include immobilization, elongation injury, compression injury, and repetitive stress. Some precautions you want to take note of before you do this test is heightened irritability, other conditions that can aggravate during the test, such as cervical spine. Several contraindications for this test include recent onset or worsening of neurological symptoms, cauda equina lesion, tethered cord syndrome, recently repaired peripheral nerve, malignancy, active inflammatory conditions, or demyelinating diseases. The tissues involved in this test are the cervical spine and soft tissue structures around the neck, as well as the shoulder, elbow, wrist, and finger joints, the ulnar nerve from the proximal to the distal end, and the nerve bed surrounding the nerve. Neural tension tests are used clinically to assess peripheral nerve mobility and sensitivity, as well as achieve non-invasive mobilization of the nervous system. Based on the anatomical position of the peripheral nerves relative to joints, these tests are designed to target a specific nerve by controlled positioning of the limb and lengthening of the nerve across the joint. These tests are also designed to progressively stretch the nerve by lengthening first proximally and then distally. It enables structural differentiation through sensitizing movements. The clinician must rely on the patient's response to determine the amount of strain because it cannot be measured clinically. You can move right into treatment following the test while you are in that position. The testing psychometrics for this tests are a little bit variable. Although interrelator reliability is strong, the criteria used have not been clearly defined. The reported specificity and sensitivity are high, but there is a lack of controlled studies from which to draw hard conclusions. A study by Sandmark and Nicelle determined that the upper limb tension test has a specificity of 94%, a sensitivity of 77%, a positive predictive value of 85%, and a negative predictive value of 91%. In 22 out of 75 subjects randomly selected with reported neck pain. All right, so now we're going to go into a little bit how you do the test on your subject. So we're going to first start off on an anatomical model. You want to begin with the uninvolved side, and then you want to make sure you're always starting in the same position and using the same sequence of motions. Also, make sure each motion is assessed after it's performed, and you want to make sure that the motion is performed in a non-irritable range. Once you reproduce symptoms, the patient um, should let you know, and you should stop and assess the sensitizing motion, which is side bending away and then towards. So to start, your patient should be in supine. You're gonna extend the wrist and fingers, pronate the arm. You're gonna flex at the elbow, depress the shoulder girdle, laterally rotate, and then abduct the arm, all while assessing each motion in between. After you reach this point, or a point where the pain is reproduced, have your patient side bend away and then towards. So looking into more of what's behind a negative and positive test result, if you experience a negative test result, the patient would have a negative test if they did not have any symptoms and they were within a normal range of motion, or they may experience some discomfort, but if it's not associated with or does not change with sensitizing movements. Positive tests are when the sensitizing movements to remove tension decrease symptoms, or when you're increasing the tension, the symptoms are increased. It's also important to note that the symptoms are associated with the nervous system and not other anatomical structures. It's really important to always remember to wash your hands before you treat your patient. Hi Danica, my name is Lauren Snyder. Hi. I'm going to be your physical therapist today. Okay. So I've heard that you're having some problems with your right shoulder, you're having some pain and numbness down the arm, is yeah. that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I want to do is a test that's going to rule in or rule out some nerve pathology. Okay. Um, and when I do this, you'll be laying down on your back. I'm going to take you through a series of motions and you're going to end up in this position. Okay. After each motion, I'm going to ask you if you have any of those symptoms being reproduced and we will stop there. Um, during the test, I also need to 
have you side bend your head away and towards. So okay. I'll ask you to do that. Okay? Okay. So if you want to lay down. And I'm going to just have your hand here. Okay. Um, any pain with this? No. How are you now? Good. Any pain with that? No. Still okay? Mm hmm. Good? Yep. Right, right there? Right there, yeah. Okay, can you bend your head away and towards? And did your symptoms get better or worse with those motions? Um, they didn't really change. Okay. And you can sit up. So since your symptoms didn't change, what that's telling me is that it's not um, involved with the nerve. Okay. Um, if it was involved with the nerve, it would either get worse when you moved your head away or better when you moved it towards. Okay? All right.